Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So here we know that alpha, beta and gamma are the three roots of the cubic equation that we've got here. So let's just write down what that tells us. So another way of writing the equation, because we know what the roots are, is we could say, well, it must be x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma is equal to 0. So that's the same as x cubed plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So what we can say is that we can multiply out uh, these brackets. So taking an x from each one of them will give us x cubed. And then looking at what we get for the x squared term, we're going to have a minus alpha times x squared, a minus beta times x squared, and a minus gamma times x squared. So we can put that as minus alpha plus beta plus gamma times x squared. And then similarly look at the, uh, the term in x. So for example, we've got minus alpha times minus beta times x. So that's going to be alpha beta times x. So we will have alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha multiplying x. And finally, the constant term alpha beta gamma, or minus alpha beta gamma, and that of course is still equal to zero. And then we're comparing that, we're comparing the coefficients of the given cubic, x cubed plus 3x plus 2 is zero. So in other words, we know that the coefficient of x squared is going to be zero, because in the given equation, we don't see an x squared. So let's just write that down. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is zero by looking at the coefficients of x squared. And then looking at the coefficient of x, we've got alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha. So this time we're looking at the coefficient of x, so that's equal to 3. And then comparing the constant terms, we can see that alpha, beta, gamma is equal to minus 2. So that's what we know simply by comparing coefficients. Then, if we look at what we want, we want to find alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. So we need to look at what it is that we know and think how we can use that to find what we want. So let's just give ourselves some more space. So what we want is alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. So what I think we should do first of all, given that we know alpha plus beta plus gamma, let's actually square that. So we're going to have alpha plus beta plus gamma all squared and see what that gives us. So remember what that means is alpha plus beta plus gamma multiplying alpha plus beta plus gamma. So when we multiply that out, you can see we're going to get alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. But that's not all, because we're also going to get, for example, alpha times beta, alpha times gamma, and so on. And in fact, that gives us, we should get a total of six more terms, shouldn't we? We've got three, and there are another six giving us a total of nine terms, as we're multiplying three terms by three. So we've got two of each of alpha beta, beta gamma, and gamma alpha. And then we can rearrange this to make alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared the subject. So alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared is equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma all squared subtract 2 times alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha. And you can see that so that's really useful. If you look at the top right hand corner, we know alpha plus beta plus gamma. So let's just 
right down a big zero, zero squared is zero, isn't it? So that bit's zero. And then we've got minus two multiplying, and we know the alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha is equal to three. So that gives us our answer, negative six. And you might look at that and think that there's something strange about that because we're adding together three squares and getting a negative answer. So why is that? Why is the answer negative? Answers in the comments, please.